so i guess we can start uh, so good morning everyone and uh, thank you uh, for being uh, present here today for entrepreneur india's uh, uh, resilience series uh, today we are going to talk about a very interesting space a space that has uh, intrigued a lot of us uh, you know the india made social media apps uh, which has seen a meteoric rise of late Uh, I'm Saurav Kumar, editor, uh, special projects entrepreneur India, uh, the moderator for the session. Uh, before we start, uh, for the attendees, I'll, uh, I, I would uh, want to let you know that uh, you know the discussion will go on for uh, 45 minutes, and uh, this will be followed by a, a Q and A session for uh, 15 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions during the uh, course of the discussion, you can uh, 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 you can post it to the Q and A option, and if you are live on. Uh, facebook you can put your uh, uh, you can leave your question in the comment section we'll uh, take up the question post the uh, uh, session uh, post the discussion and uh, if it is directed towards anyone uh, any as a specific uh, panelist uh, uh, please mention that so uh, we can direct it uh, to to that panelist uh, i will uh, i will uh, now uh, uh, introduce our uh, panelists for the day uh, we have with us uh, mr uh, uh, shivank agarwal founder and ceo mitro Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Sunil Jain, founder Sprout Capital; Mr. Sumit Ghosh, uh, co-founder Chingari; uh, Mr. Pulkit Agarwal, uh, co-founder Fell; and Mr. Siddharth Pai, founding partner T14 Capital. Uh, welcome, everyone. So, uh, you know, uh, it's very interesting. So, the world's second largest smartphone market and 200 million users of, uh, you know. of one particular chinese app that was what suddenly became available towards the uh, you know end of last month when in the indian government banned the uh, 59 chinese apps and uh, these u- users rushed to india made platforms to continue you know showcasing their creativity so going by some of the accounts i have heard that you know app providers uh, actually struggled to cope uh, with the influx so you know uh, how was it initially and uh, Uh, has it settled or continues to be an ongoing thing so uh, you know i'll come to uh, 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 sumit you first and uh, start with you so if you can uh, you know just explain how was it when it all started and has it uh, really settled down by now sure so i think uh, the ban came on uh, the evening of 28 uh, and uh, next two days were like really really crazy uh, i mean the whole team our whole team at uh, chingari we were up for next for 8 hours trying to you know Uh, <clears throat> scale our backend uh, infrastructure try and try to optimize everything um, and and uh, at the peak of the uh, you know peak of this uh, ban i think uh, at the peak of the influx uh, 600000 users were uh, trying to on were trying to on board every every hour so uh, yeah i mean it was crazy and also amazing <laughs> and also really really stressful at the same time uh i mean uh, I, I, the uh, things have uh, cooled down now uh, i mean uh, right now uh, we are stable uh, getting half a million uh, you know fresh downloads every day uh, but uh, yeah i mean it's much much uh, much more uh, cooler and, and stable uh, than the first 72 hours now and that's okay. that's the situation okay okay yeah i i remember you uh, posting uh, you know everyone posting on uh, twitter that how much uh, stress it is but yeah. it's a good 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 stress i would believe uh, shivank if i can come to you how was your experience uh, amid all this i mean the experience is definitely very fantastic but the good thing was i mean we launched on 11th of april that was when you know tiktok was already in the market and at that time we see uh, you know unprecedented growth at that time as well so fortunately uh, we were able to scale up the you know uh, our backend during the period and as uh, as far as you know uh, scaling is concerned that was not been the concern during the ban but definitely what, what we saw is five times the i mean the scale that we are seeing a day before so in that sense um, definitely uh, now uh, user gathering users is not a, a big challenge and the focus should be like you know giving them the best experience to the customers Okay. Okay. How about you? And uh, you know, there were some issues that I was hearing that you know about buffering of videos and all. Was it because of the uh, unpreparedness of the servers or something, or has it been 
are taken care of right now yeah absolutely so i think uh, first of all thanks aurav for uh, inviting all of us on the common forum uh, to talk about trail we are a lifestyle social network we are essentially focusing on meaningful content of um, you know indians in 3 minute video format uh, so we are initially and even now are differentiated from uh, the tiktoks or the other chinese apps that we have seen now uh, talking about the growth yes we definitely didn't expect that this kind of 10x growth will get in a matter of like 7 days uh, so definitely the systems got overloaded uh, but within the first 48 hours we had essentially fixed it upgraded our systems and i think we have one of the most matured uh, you know experience right now uh, uh, in the industry and right now i think uh, there hardly any you know kind of user experience issues that we are facing with our users so yep all of that has been kind of taken care of Mm-hmm. and some exciting growth for uh, us as well as the other apps in the ecosystem mm-hmm. so uh, if you talk to me to shivank punkit would you agree that it was just a stroke of luck of being there at the right place at the right time or was it actually you know your products were there and they were shaping up but the 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 the, 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 the sudden uh, you know ban uh, acted as a catalyst for the situation and it kind of brought you so much if i can Ask you. Yeah, I mean, uh, so nobody expected uh, uh, that this ban will occur, or nobody was building uh, their business or building their uh, you know the product because they were thinking that this ban would come and will grow. I mean, we were having an organic uh, growth before uh, the ban. In fact, um, uh, I mean, uh, the whole month of June uh, and before the day of, of the ban, of the ban, we were at 3.5 million downloads. In fact, in fact, a day before Anand Mehra sir had tweeted about uh, Chingari that I have not downloaded TikTok, but uh, I have downloaded Chingari. So I mean, we we had our or or you know organic roadmap of growth, uh, but uh, if, uh, I mean, and this uh, that of course came as a sudden you know sudden uh, shock to to the whole whole industry, and of course that led to the uh, you know the <laughs> meteoric rise of and, and the downloads and everything. So. i mean uh, i think all of us uh, had our own uh, own charts and own uh, strategies of growth um, uh, pre ban and now uh, post ban uh, obviously like we will have to tweak it be more aggressive hungry because there is a land grab out there oh. so uh, uh, yeah i mean so there was a, there was obviously a pre ban strategy and now i think uh, all of us will have a post ban strategy in terms of growth scale attention oh. so well, i have seen that uh, you know you guys have started hiring big time so is that also a part of the strategy shivank i mean definitely we want to make a leading company of india you want you want the best uh, you know minds and i think a company is not run by two people so it has to be you know uh, good guys in their own respective areas and definitely uh, in the engineering and product will be always focus a lot so in that sense we are we are building a strong team as oh. engineer So, uh, uh, you know, uh, Siddharth, uh, I'll come to you and uh, you know uh, ask you this question: that uh, uh, what now? I mean, yes, there is a ban, and we have uh, you know these many users are there. So, uh, you know, what happens next? I mean, definitely there is going to be competition, as uh, we were discussing that you know there's a there, there's a there's a Geo, uh, Microsoft, uh, Google, uh, Facebook combined together, sitting somewhere, and then we have. Uh, you know players like Chingari, Cell, uh, Roposo, and everyone. So, uh, what happens now? Where, how do you see this planning? Honestly, so, uh, so the the short answer is your guess is actually as good as mine. I don't think in, in the in the entire in the entire history of of Indian startups as you know we haven't actually come across a situation where the market where the market has actually been matured to a very very large extent. There's been the level of education and level of access that's required by the broader market has already been done. by people by uh, that's already been done and now essentially it's just the products and the services that need to be built out uh, on the sas of now so in india see the india story has always held held a particular allure for a number of investors but the story still needed a little more time to sort of mature the reason the two greatest triggers of maturation of the indian sara of of india as an entire country entering into this new age is number one the cost of the data has actually come down to a very large extent this is completely completely thanks to what the geo effect of what geo has been doing over the past 3 to 4 or 4 years simultaneously with this the ability and the hardware to access all this has actually come in also thanks to the number of chinese phones and number of smaller phones and now with kios and the geo phone everyone actually has access to this entire part and as india start and even the learning of the initial tutelage of transactions has already been done to a very large extent 
by by a large number of companies of all companies hyper local companies and news companies now the content and social media companies and all that so india as a whole as of now has reached a certain level of maturity wherein most of the populace it has, has has access to all these particular apps most of the populace is comfortable using this and but what's important to note here is they're actually comfortable using this from a either either from a chinese perspective through tiktok through wechat etc or from an american perspective through facebook through whatsapp uh, instagram uh, twitter etc etc the important thing as of now from what i have to see going forward is which are the entrepreneurs and which are the companies that are actually going to create an india first experience it's an experience created by indians for indians in india we've had too many cases where people have actually have headquarters have the headquarters either in the us or singapore and then they're trying to sort of figure out the indian mindset and do it right about now we're seeing a new generation of entrepreneurs coming led by shivang by sumit by pulkit and a number of them who are actually creating their apps and everything in india so getting and what atman nepar bharat as well as a chinese um, as well as a ban on chinese apps is actually done it sort of accelerated all their growth maps and everything and helped them actually get a large number of users but the defining factor for all these companies and the way i see this entire thing playing forward is that whoever can come up with the best strategies to actually retain all these particular users make make sure they're actively engaged in the platform and start creating it catering to their needs which is uniquely indian these are the people who are actually going to survive this out and their ability and their ability to navigate these particular waters is going to be especially important because facebook now as you said the geo entire combined whatsapp is going to get a huge leg up with regard to that instagram's already part of the facebook network they've already launched a similar app in india which is actually catering to the indian audience or so they believe and they have the backbone of geo to actually run that and simultaneously the the uh, the ban on the chinese apps i think all of us are mature enough to understand it's not going to be a permanent ban um, after after all in the span of the next 6 months 9 months 12 months or 18 months or in whatever period when they actually come back they're going to come back they're going to come back with a big bang so it's during this particular short interim period as a geo combined is slowly geo facebook combined is slowly finding its heels and getting regulatory approvals and the chinese apps will have been coming this is the golden golden hour or the golden opportunity for indian apps to actually create so the investments into people the investments into technology and understanding indian behavior very few people have actually been able to track uh, has been track the indian behavioral mindset and the way they actually interact with these particular apps i think which of the founders on this who can actually crack that particular part they in turn can actually be, uh, have the ability to attract a large amount of capital and build a formidable moat so it's not going to be the only the chinese is no longer the question is going to be a dichotomy of is it the us enabled ecosystem or the chinese enabled ecosystem we're going to see the rise of an indian enabled ecosystem and i'm confident of the fact that the people on this call are, are going to be the people who are actually going to bring that to fruition as well right right uh, so we'll come to you as about that, that you know it's going to be these indian entrepreneurs who are going to make it happen and there's a it's a golden hour as he said so you know what would you really want to see uh happening during this golden period that that this window that uh, that we have uh, so you know and uh, where would you put your money uh, right now sure so uh, sort of if you if you look at if you look at the india internet or digital thing you know there are about 400 million the next 400 million users which are mostly lingual right and uh, and 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 this this opportunity which is being provided by both atmanirbhar chinese app ban i think people have to or or the startups have to you know uh, utilize this as an opportunity to create differentiation or create a uh, base in in the next 400 million users uh, that's one space you know where a lot of the multinationals have still not been able to penetrate deeper mm-hmm. uh, there is uh, and that's that's you know probably one of the reasons why if you look at if you look at china china is also you know while uh, it's largely a mandarin speaking country but there are diversities within china itself right and that's one of the reasons and i mean with with an aid on the internet regulatory practice in china, in china a lot of companies have been able to uh, you know create massive scale there but it's also a market where you see different kinds of players existing you know for example redbook uh, you know it's it's a niche uh, social media play in china uh, so i think for all these startups uh, there is a window of opportunity available here to double down on their user engagement um, and and the metric you know is is how much time of engagement can you garner from them an average indian today is spending about 2 and 1/2 hours of his time on a social media uh, you know in either of the social medias what wallet share of that can you garner to how deeper can you you know build your uh, proximity in the next 400 million users and that's where you can probably create a differentiation in the larger whole frame oh. uh, of course uh, you know a lot of these international players will come back will come back with a bank uh, and with more dollars than what 
uh, you know, uh, some of these startups currently have, uh, you know, uh, but to battle them out, I think you will have to create a solid differentiation. And, and I believe that those two differentiations can come from one um, user engagement, which, which could be measured by the time of wallet share of an individual. And the second one is, you know, how can you differentiate and create a larger base uh, in the next 400 million users. Uh, and for that, you know, maybe you'll have to go multilingual, you'll have to figure out strategies to, you know, uh, build engagement levels there. Uh, and, and probably, you know, build uh, key opinion leaders if you want to look at a larger monetization strategy in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, from different multilingual. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, differentiation is, I think, I believe is is one key factor here, as I, I also believe. So I'll come to the uh, entrepreneurs here and, uh, you know, uh, Pulkit, if I can start with you. So uh, what is the strategy going ahead from here uh, for you? And how are you going to differentiate yourself from, you know, I mean, it, it, yes, of course, you're, you're talking about the Ropo Search and Gadi Trail Metro, but there are even very smaller ones also, which are, you know, I see every day some or the other coming up. So what's going to be your plan from here on? Sure. So I think, uh, first of all, Saurav will keep focusing on what we have been doing for the last two and a half years. So regardless of Chinese app ban, in the last one year, we had grown 25x uh, with more than, you know, 20 million downloads. And after this Chinese app ban, it has just got doubled, right? So it has just fueled up for us. Uh, let's first try to understand what Trail is and how we are already differentiated in the market. Uh, so we are not a like 30 second short video app where people come in front of camera and do lip syncing, dance or music. Uh, we are typically a, you know, lifestyle video app where people essentially come and talk about meaningful content around their passion and interest, like, uh, you know, recipes, beauty, fashion, uh, you know, movie and TV reviews, et cetera, et cetera. So if you see, we are a modern age replacement for the long textual blogs that used to exist on the internet. Uh, but for the Indians, in order to express their stories about all of these passion and the interests, they need a new age format to be able to do that. And that is where we have, you know, brought down the entry barrier to blogging and blogging for people, and which is what we stand for in the ecosystem. Uh, so our aim would be to continue focusing on that and be able to provide a meaningful content to the Indians in their own language and okay. establish some really key uh, differentiations in terms of content, in terms of the persona of a content creator and be able to, you know, double tap on that over a future period of time. Uh, Sumit, coming to you, what would be the strategy, especially if uh, Sumit talked about the monetization part. So how, how are we going to, you know, have you thought about it? Before um, uh, monetization, uh, let's, let's talk. Uh, I think the... Uh, uh, so, much so Shivank, if, I, uh, if you can you know, uh, uh, tell me about your strategy going at uh, the time. Sure, in terms of monetization or uh, in general? Yeah, I mean, general, your yeah. strategy from, yeah, you know, the, 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 we talked about differentiation, you know, it's what the key is going to be because there are going to be a lot of players looking for the, uh, you know, share of the pie that is available. The Indian market is huge, uh, definitely, but, you know, everyone will be looking for their share. Uh, share of the pie. So, how are you going to, uh, you know, offer it there? So, yeah, I mean, all the panelists clearly understand that the likes of TikTok is going to come. So, definitely following them blindly won't work in the long run. So, that's for sure, and that's the reason we we have been there before the TikTok ban, and because we knew that TikTok will be there, and we have to be, you know, creating a separate space for us. Definitely, uh, TikTok has done very good uh, in one segment. That's a light humor videos, mobile videos. So definitely they have done a lot of innovation, mobile videos. Plus they have brought one category that is lip syncing and you know light humor video. So can we can we take that uh, to to any video? Can we can we make it YouTube for mobile, right? Uh, so for example, likes of Netflix or YouTube has been pre-mobile era. They has been you know when when mobile was not there and they were more aligned for television or sorry uh, laptop or you know PC needs. Yes. They've been more on the landscape mode. They've been long and they've been heavy. What we feel that they, I mean, these, uh, you know, products have skipped the mobile era and directly jumped to the television era, right? Can, can we create a whole system for mobile videos, which is not limited to any category, right? Uh, for example, with the recent popularity of, I mean, Mitro, what we have seen, uh, you know, people of, you know, age group like 40 or 45 plus, they have started using the application, but they find 
in, in, in these likes of the application, uh, the content is not best suited for their needs. So can, can we bring the content for these category of the users? So definitely a lot of scope in making, uh, you know, the application, I mean, Metro is a de facto application for, for mobile videos, not just a single category. Cool. Okay. So Mit, uh, so you can continue. I mean, you, you got dropped off. So yeah, so your strategy from here on, and then maybe if you can talk about the monetization part as well. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't know uh, like uh, did, uh, what part uh, of my, uh, I, I dropped off, so what part of the conversation? Yeah, you can start from the beginning because you took that stuff off, yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, I mean, I was just starting and I think the connection dropped off, uh, so yeah. I apologize for that. Um, so yeah, I mean, before uh, talking about monetization, I would like to talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the key differentiation in terms of uh, tech uh, that, that uh, you know, that, 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 that would, I think that uh, that would be a part of strategy of every player. So at, at Chingari, we are we're really, really focused at, uh, you know, very deeply in terms of tech. So who builds uh, and, and we are trying to, uh, you know, build the first um, and, 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 and a very deep uh, personalized, personalized recommendation model uh, in terms of who is able to figure out the taste of 400 million, uh, you know, or 500 million in, uh, Indians in terms of short video. Uh, so and, and if you see uh, ByteDance or TikTok did this really really well. So uh, so you were once you were on the platform, you got really hooked to it in terms of you scroll a video and and then it will, the next video it comes and uh, you know you were you were the platform was able to really uh, uh, predict and personalize your taste. And I, I think that is uh, that is something uh, which will be a key differentiator in terms of product uh, and, and engineering. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, monetization wise, uh, we are working with brands uh, and uh, we have, influ I mean, we are, we are trying to get influencers in the platform. And then the idea is to get, uh, you know, get them to work with brands and do some, some sort of contests uh, or hashtag challenges with, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, the goal is to do very uh, deep content focused, uh, uh, you know, experiences in the product without disrupting user, user uh, experience. So it could be a, it could be a filter, you know, a brand filter that will, uh, that the user will get to create content on top of it, or it could be like hashtag challenges where brands come up with some unique hashtags and the content creators create content on it. And uh, the brands pay money uh, uh, via the platform to the influencers. A lot of, uh, a lot of innovation around, you know, around these things uh, is what we are working on at the moment. Okay. Okay. So, uh, 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 you know, before we move to uh, uh, the other question, I would, Again, request our attendees to, you know, keep uh, putting their questions. We'll take them up uh, once we are uh, through with the discussion. So, you know, uh, one of the uh, observations uh, regarding the TikTok style of video was, uh, you know, a lot of people found it very cringeworthy. And, you know, they, you know, of course, it was hugely, hugely popular. And there were very good people who were showcasing their talent. But for some, maybe we can call them uh, very few, but there was... So how do we how do we take care of that? I mean, is there a way to uh, you know uh, counter that uh, argument or counter that uh, the thing? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Pulkit uh, Shivan, can you want? Sure. Uh, so Saurabh, uh, you're very correct. I think Chinese come with an ideology wherein uh, they're very aggressive about you know some of the content that they really allowed on their platform. Uh, the reason is that they have seen similar kind of scale happening in China and they kind of got into controversies over there. And that was the growth story for them in China as well. Uh, they tried to replicate the same playbook here in India by creating controversies or enabling uh, the talk of the town by having such kind of content which you're talking about. Uh, I think uh, it's a responsibility and essentially the ideology of a founder and the founding team behind the network uh, to essentially figure out what they really stand for. Uh, so at Trail, we don't have essentially any sorts of cringe content or any sorts of you know, NSFW content onto the platform. We have made sure that the content is super clean. Uh, it stands by the values. It's something which imparts some sort of you know, takeaway to a user when they're consuming those videos over a period of time. Uh, so I believe it's fairly in the hands of the founders to really, uh, you know, kind of make those systems, those uh, technologies and those mechanisms, which can ensure that you have more responsible entertainment and content consumption on their platform. Uh, that is the first part. Second part, I think, uh, you know, when you talk about from the content creators perspective, right? So I'm sure like most of us have heard about this controversy of YouTube versus TikTok, right? Wherein a lot of YouTubers came on, you know, the cameras and they started roasting a lot of TikTok content creators. If you empathize with these content creators at TikTok, they don't want to replicate the same journey now in any other platform. 
right? So if you talk to these talk, TikTok creators, they are like, I've got you know millions of followership. I'm done with that, right? Now if I'm starting on a new platform like Trell or Chingari or a Mitro, I want to essentially have something which is a very differentiated persona from what I had on you know TikTok because they don't want to be called themselves a cringe-worthy content creator. They want to be called as you know the opinion leaders. They want to be called as somebody whom people could look up to or aspire up to. So I think the sentiment in the content creators economy has also changed. Uh, they are looking for more responsible ways of creating content. Uh, you know, I think they're slowly getting away from you know that one night you know you know fame and then getting lost right uh, in in nowhere. So I think uh, you know all of these entrepreneurs who are building for Bharat have a golden opportunity to really think about it deeply and enable that side of these content creators onto their platform. Mm -hmm. So that will you have an opinion on this about the kind of content that. Uh... you know we saw on tiktok and maybe because the tiktok from very early has been in controversy it got banned uh, you know stopped once earlier also and you know it it was because of i don't know maybe the the lack of uh, 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 you know uh, monitoring of content or something so is that something you would want to see when these uh, indian uh, indian apps come up that's a bit Definitely. See, I think the first thing, one of the reasons why India also wants to sort of inculcate and facilitate the growth of homegrown homegrown players is the fact that they're they're attuned they're attuned to the laws of the land and they understand the sensitivities of the Indian populace. Some of the companies who have actually come in from abroad, for example, for TikTok, sort of fostered this very uh, polarizing content. It's either been not safe for work, it's been very it's been very aligned, it's, it's actually uh, maligning a number of people or a, a number of sections of society. you seen all this all this sort of stuff happen over there and it has actually become an entire problem now what everyone sort of realized now is look it's not these sort of platforms or the need to express yourself on these particular platforms will actually remain it's a curation aspect that's actually going to become an important differentiator for everyone so for all the entrepreneurs who are on this call and everyone actually looking this they also need to understand that the way youtube actually set up these boundaries and principles very early on it wasn't like the wild wild west and they had those particular core principles that they want to love the sort of content they want to love the sort of maligning activities to actually happen the sort of slandering to actually go through that's going to that's actually going to become a core thesis of all these companies going forward along with this an important question that everyone has to tackle as now it's actually going to be with regard to data security and privacy and data sovereignty india has had the personal data protection bill for quite some time as it has gone through it's actually gone to a sub committee it's gone to a standing committee they're actually reviewing that as well Number, numerous people have actually written opinion blogs and posts on this entire aspect also so it can be important for these people to be attuned to the cultural sensitivity or civil cultural sensitivities of the indian people as well as the needs of the indian government with regard to these particular aspects as well and balancing that fine line will actually will actually give them a lot more credits with the government with the regulators with with the, with the indian consumers and all as well a number number of people have already spoken about the fact that all their data is going to reside on indian servers it's not going to be on a server either in singapore or any other such geographies also when it comes to any data protection or privacy all the laws of india even the bill that's actually come out as well and the shri krishna commission on it they are actually going to be attuned to that also another aspect that that we also hit the head on the nail is what is the degree of curation so tiktok according to me was like the wild west it was the 0.1 version of what india's aspiration is to actually remain on the on platforms like this shamang's also spoken about the fact that the tiktok format or the standing video format or the phone format where essentially people are used to watching videos like this and now prefer to watch it like this how that need is not going to go away there are people who are 45 and plus who are also doing the same thing sumit has also spoken about the fact that about how they they are creating the technology to sort of curate all this content as well that level of curation is going to be essential for them as they go forward and along with this if they can actually if they can actually marry all these particular aspects into a more cohesive platform and be attuned to the laws of india they can do it and for the and the ability to attract content creators all the people from tiktok migrate them onto their particular platforms as of now and and go, go through it i think uh, I, i think somebody on the call also spoke about the fact that a number of pulkita uh, believe spoke about the fact that youtubers started roasting tiktok stars for a very long period of time It was actually about five to ten years ago where people, the normal media stars, were actually roasting the YouTubers for, on the exact same thing. So the entire cycle actually continues. So there means the audience already exists. The uh, content creators and everyone already already does exist over there as well. Everyone's already familiar with the entire content. How do you actually marshal these people onto your platform while balancing the fine line of data sovereignty, data protection, and curation? It's going to be. it's a multivariate optimization problem that all these founders are actually going to be grappling with as of now and the way they actually fine tune this while catering to the needs of their users 
and differentiating themselves from everyone else who's actually coming on board. That is going to be the that's going to be the key differentiator for these companies, and that's what's going to actually give them the ammo and the ability to actually combat the geo Facebook combine as well as the as well as when the Chinese apps and all actually come. Back. Yeah, definitely. I mean, data protection is uh, you know something that we've been talking about for a long, long time with data localization, and that was that has been a key contention for a lot of like WhatsApp has not been able to uh, roll out its uh, you know payments platform here till now till the you know till we believe that. Uh, what they say is correct and true. So, uh, Sunil, I'll come to you and, uh, you know, continue on the same, uh, the thing that, you know, right now, of course, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's more about uh, who takes the larger pie in terms of, so what do you, in terms of content, so what would you really want to see, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Indian uh, app makers do to make it, uh, you know, uh, something that everyone can watch, you know, sometimes, uh, at times, the the content of uh, you know suddenly uh, I'll I'll give you an example. An elderly at my home, you know, browsing through uh, uh, you know uh, you know a, a certain uh, 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 Facebook or somewhere, and some some video pops up. That's not very likely. So, you know, do you think we need to really invest in deep technologies, uh, deep tech or something, uh, to make these uh, really controlled uh, how 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 these are uh, you know portrayed or uh, served to the people? So, uh, so two things on it, you know, one, uh, you know, as, as culturally as Indians, you know, they love controversy. So, you know, I mean, uh, uh, some of, some of these apps also, you know, you would want, would want to, uh, leverage that initially in the initial phase, you know, to probably garner some, uh, eyeballs, but, uh, I agree with you that at some stage, you know, I mean, and, and the two things which could happen one, you know, eventually you will see a state where, uh, you have, uh, people of different age groups or you have, you know, I mean, and, and within a certain age group, I mean, when, when let's say between 20 and 40, you could still have, you know, micro groups, which will, you know, leverage towards some platform. Uh, two reasons for it. Again, you know, India is not a winner takes all market as I see it today. Uh, so, you know, there could be uh, all of these founders, you know, uh, targeting different subgroups within that. And, uh, and, you know, a, a subgroup of 20 to 25 could be leveraging towards a different kind of content. Maybe a subgroup of 30 to 35 would be leveraging towards a lifestyle kind of a content. So, you know, there could be different genres which could uh, appear as we move along. It's still early days in terms of adoption today. Uh, so focus today will be, you know, to, uh, to you know, uh, get the adoption right, you know, I mean, and, and, and that's what I believe all, all these founders would want to do. Uh, is to get a decent enough base, engage them to a certain extent, and engagement could be across multiple channels. To your point, in terms of you know uh, content, of course, uh, I think uh, once once the differentiation policies of each of these founders is clear, they themselves will have to you know figure out how to, how how they want to control what kind of content they want to display on their platforms. Like Pulkit, for example, you know uh, mentioned that they've stayed away from a certain kind of content right from beginning. Right, the more leverage they started as a lifestyle app, and they're probably leveraging towards uh, that genre. Uh, uh, so, so I think that's something which will happen as we move in the ecosystem. Uh, there's, you know, it's still early days. I mean, we are talking about 20, 30 million downloads today after the Chinese app, right? Prior to this, all of them were, you know, probably sub 10 million kind of downloads. Compared this to, you know, uh, uh, an MNC app which came to India, and and more a Chinese app. You know, there were other apps also who came to India. Uh, but, you know, no one could create a 200 million kind of a uh, user base. So I think the focus from from uh, uh, a startup's perspective today is, you know, to have, uh, you know, content which will give you eyeballs initially. And at some stage, you know, as you start building your differentiation, uh, which, you know, you need to start thinking today, but you need to start building a differentiation strategy, which will give you a certain uh, pocket of that audience whom you can retain, engage, and, and, you know, uh, probably, you know, at a later stage, even probably monetize on that. Uh, so, you know, before we move to the next question, I'll again uh, request our uh, viewers to uh, keep uh, uh, their questions coming. We'll take them in another five minutes, maybe. So, uh, you know, Shivank, I'll come to you. And, you know, I was reading a report and uh, I, you know, which said that the headline read like Desi clones you know, basically calling these Indian apps. So, you know, how, how do you, how do you react to that? I mean, how, how, how would you, how would you see that? I mean, uh, I don't understand the word clone. So I think a uh, new application, which run in the market, which you get user acceptance is definitely a clone because people will, if there is alternative, people will try that. 
So for example, uh, we compare uh, Google Docs versus Microsoft Word. It's very simple to say one is a clone of the other, but they've been working on different circumstances, different platforms, right? And they'll be serving a different segment of the users. So as long as uh, we, we are doing that, uh, I think we have, I mean, uh, in, the, in the previous question, I've categorized that how we are differing from TikTok from being a, a single in a single sector to a de facto platform for videos. So that that's the vision is not a clone, uh, it's something beyond it. Okay, okay. Uh, Pulkit, how do you react to that? Uh, I think, uh, our, so, team, <laughs> our team laugh at, uh, you know, calling a lot of platforms clones. Uh, I think it is, uh, you know, honestly, the inability of a lot of people to really understand the intricacies of how social networks work, right? It's a very nascent stage at which our ecosystem is. Technology startups have just, you know, got a lot of visibility recently and people are still adapting and trying to understand deeply how they're differentiated. So I believe it is the, uh, you know, the ecosystem uh, from the reporting point of view will take some of the time to really understand the intricacies and be able to empathize and appreciate uh, the differentiation that, you know, all of the entrepreneurs and their product are, you know, trying to position at. Uh, second thing, I think even, let's say in worst case, if somebody wants to clone uh, something, there's nothing bad with that. Like, you know, I know uh, TikTok was not an original idea. We had the smash for a long time, which was a lip syncing app, right? So I don't think like, you know, somebody saying cloning uh, makes you a unicorn or really, a, really a large, you know, uh, company, right? That requires a lot of background work, to really make sure that you grow very fast and you're able to capitalize on the market as well. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, I believe and I request all the reporters to support Indian startups rather than calling them clones and, you know, also demoralizing a lot of entrepreneurs who are trying to create differentiation in the market under the heavy circumstances of, you know, uh, play that we are having with. So that's my, you know, genuine and deep request uh, to everybody. Yeah. Great. Sumit, how, 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 how about you? I'm sure that you you have also come across this term and I came across and I kind of laughed, but then, you know, I I thought I'll ask you guys to respond to this. Sure. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, I've seen, seen those headlines. Uh, In fact, uh, a lot of times you have been called, called as alternative to TikTok and Indian alternative. I mean, and that is much more graceful, you know, (laughs) a graceful word to be called as an alternative to TikTok. But yeah, I mean, um, every I think every product and every founding team will have uh, has its own way of looking at things. Um, I mean, uh, uh, so I think uh, how uh, how a reporter or the uh, you know an average uh, audience looks at it, uh, looks at it is okay. Uh, it's make we camera. Uh, this also has a creation tool, so it is a clone. But uh, you know what goes behind that in terms of tech and product and what are the algorithms you know that are that, that are being developed. Uh, and 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 and, then, and these are like very very uh, you know unique and, and, and intricate things. So um, uh, I mean uh, it will take uh, I think it will take the uh, take some time for everyone to understand that and have a mature understanding of that. And I think over the once that happens, the reporting will also you know improve and um, and people will stop calling us alternatives or clones and we'll, we will have our own identity uh, in, in terms of products. Trust me, you all already have. Uh, Mr. Mahindra tweeted about you, and others have been talking about yes. the others. So uh, there's no doubt that there is uniqueness. Yes, the differentiation has to come, which I believe will people once they start using and looking at it. I mean, a lot of people maybe who are making the comments have not even looked at the uh, apps, maybe. So uh, let's bring that put to rest. Uh, we'll put to rest that session. Uh, Siddharth uh, Sunil, I'll come to you before we uh, for, for one question, and then we we'll start taking questions. Is that you know, uh, yes, definitely uh, for people on my left side of my screen are Shivan Fulkip and Sumit. They have to do a lot of things, uh, you know, within this uh, golden period. But what about uh, the investor community and the government that, that needs to be done in terms of you, what you were mentioning, the playbook, the India playbook, what should that be right now? As uh, you know, uh, you guys mentioned that, you know, very, very less capital comes from Indian investors for, uh, you know, these things. So, is that going to change, or is there a possibility that uh, you know that will uh, that will be taken care of? So we are. So all of us, all of us are hopeful for it. The Indian startup ecosystem has always been wherein the entrepreneurs have essentially led the entire charge, and the Indian investor, the Indian investors, the Indian investing class have shown a studied reluctance to actually support them monetarily. A number of people go online, they, they tweet, they retweet, they pay very nice payments and all online, but very few people actually open up their pockets through these particular apps and everything as well. I think. 
Indian, especially India, India Inc. needs to actually are looking at these companies with a lot more love. We've seen a number of you know, very large Indian Indian players actually looking at acquisitions primarily abroad and then publicly writing out those acquisitions in some time also a few years after that. The only Indian, the largest Indian, uh, this one, investor into startups, the largest in M&A, M&A expert and driver in startups is actually Geo. But the thing is, India doesn't need only one Geo. India actually needs another 10 Geos in order to make sure that the potential of India actually does come up. So even what uh, what Indian investors have actually started doing as of now, one of the reasons why Indian investors are laughing to invest into startups, primarily actually stems from government policy. We actually look at the stock market. The stock market, it's easy to enter, it's easy to exit. And in spite of that, it actually has a tax rate that is 40% of the tax rate that applies to startups and capital gains in startups. So the entire Indian Venture Capital Association and the industry has been trying to sensitize the government saying, look, these are, these are far riskier bets. They are illiquid also in nature. And all the money goes in as primary investment. The money that goes in directly goes into, goes into developing product, goes into creating market access, goes into hiring, goes into increasing employment. Whereas instead, the stock market is essentially like a closed circuit of people who are actually just paying money to each other to actually buy and purchase stocks. And very small amount of money actually goes into primary investments over there, right? So we've been trying to educate the government and the government also, the government is intent on Atman Edward Bharat and actually increasing this. The government should actually look at sort of rolling out, rolling out the red carpet for Indian investors and the Indian investing class to start, in, start investing into Indian startups. The bulk of the reason why people say they don't want to do this is, look, these are the, essentially the tax reason actually becomes an overarching reason. And we can't have investment decisions and the creation of an entire, entire new ecosystem be determined solely on the basis of the adverse tax policy that the government has actually created in as of now. So the government is intent on Atman Edward Bharat and to actually start creating a self-sufficient ecosystem, then we actually need to start incentivizing the Indian capital class to start investing into it and increase the amount of rupee capital that's actually coming in. And I think the government also needs to sort of articulate a playbook as to how they, how they, how exactly are they going to treat this particular apps and all as well. If you notice, the prime minister's office has actually had, actually had accounts on, uh, they had it on TikTok, they had it on WeChat, they had it on Sina Weibo, they have it on Twitter, they have it on Facebook, they have it on everything. But the question is, where is where is the government presence on an app like Mitro? Where is the government presence on an app like Trell? Where is the government presence on Chingari? Where is the government presence on all these other apps as well? Right. So the question that government needs to answer, and the Prime Minister has been very has been adamant on vocal for local. When is the government going to start practicing this? I think that's the important thing that the government also needs to shift this mindset to say, look, if I am going to back these particular startups beyond making beyond beyond the sloganeering beyond beyond the announcements. We actually only start becoming patrons and clients of all these particular companies as well. I think the moment that happens, that actually in turn is going to give the biggest stimulus to everyone. And that will clearly articulate that the government's intentions are for this to be a long-term game. And that's going to be important for every entrepreneur on this mind. Because as you mentioned previously also, vernacular, vernacular and Indic languages are going, to become, are going to become one of the differentiators compared to everything else. And it's going to be apps like this who are going to concentrate on that particular market that's actually going to get, get everyone on board. The Indian-speaking population of India is roughly about 100 million people out of a country of 1.3 billion, right? Everybody is more comfortable in their local languages. They're more comfortable laugh, laughing in Bhojpuri, crying in Malayalam, cursing in Tamil, seducing people in Canada. All these other languages do also exist. And that actually requires an innate understanding and ability to actually do it. And unless the government actually steps up and does something over here, there's very little that all the private class can actually do. Out of the $14 billion raised by Indian startups, plenty to venture capital last year, less than $1 billion is actually coming from Indian sources. And the moment, and see, money, the, there is no, money doesn't have any loyalty. Most of the international investors, they are investing into India because there's a strong economic case to be built up here. The moment another geography starts emerging and becomes far more attractive, then everyone, everyone's actually going to go there. So the moment that happens and all that money actually goes out, then the entire Indian startup ecosystem collapses. So the government needs to introspect and figure out what they actually need to do. They need to walk the talk when it comes to this. And when they are being vocal for local, that's supporting, start becoming vocal for your local apps and all, and start actually getting onto them as well and become clients and users. That's the only, that is the defining aspect of the playbook the government should actually create for this. Oh, so definitely. So, uh, you know, just to the, the point that you made, so I'll come to this, this, this for a second before I go to Sumit. Sumit, uh, Palikit Shivank, uh, have, uh, have you seen uh, 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 the Prime Minister or Chief Ministers or the celebrities uh, already signing up on your platforms and, you know, requesting for, will you have also blue tech or something? I don't know if that's going to happen. Very quickly, if you can tell me. Yeah, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Sumit. Please go ahead. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, we we will have an orange tick because that's that that's the color. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, me and I think me and Shivank uh, were uh, on the other day. We were uh, with the panel uh, with uh, 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 Ravi Shankar sir, and uh, so he was giving his blessings, uh, you know, on the panel. And yeah, I mean, I think uh, they all want us to succeed. Uh, and uh, this were his exact words that I want you guys to succeed, and you and uh, Mitro should compete, you know, and build uh, something big out of India. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we, so uh, is, we is Mr. Had Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad uh, uh, signed up on Chingari? Not yet. Not <laughs> yet. I mean, I mean, we have been yeah, we have been trying to you know get uh, even talk to mygov dot in and, and trying to get get these guys. Uh, so so talks are on, but I think um, I mean, uh, Siddharth, this, this this will take time, and uh, I think government is also watching in terms of how mature we are as a platform and i think with due time and appropriate time uh, you know they definitely will come sign sign up and ensure their support uh, i mean that that's my view about it okay okay pulkit was saying something yeah i think there is some good news for all the entrepreneurs i do believe that celebrities and notable people are uh, looking to you know kind of start uh, communicating on the platforms we are seeing some really good incoming and we are hopeful to announce some of the really great news for everybody wish you well shivan just very briefly before before i go to sunil and then we start taking questions have you seen uh, you know the likes of amita bachchan maybe or maybe you know uh, uh, you know uh, the the government departments maybe coming to register on your platforms i think that would definitely happen in the times to come uh, the thing is uh, all these applications are very very recent for three months as uh, you know even uh, sumit explained so uh, definitely a lot of focus on the product and definitely uh, i think as far as you know it ministry is concerned uh, they are showing a lot of interest and the thing is it's up to uh, the, the ball is in our court how, how good we leverage the initial momentum we have got yeah okay sunil so before we start taking questions just finally from you that you know in terms of what i asked that any explain it very beautifully that we, what needs to be done in terms of india playbook what do you want to add on that anything else in terms of investors and the government of course the tax issue has been there for a long 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 time i've been hearing since when i was maybe 10 years younger that, uh, you know this tax issues and everything uh, we've never got to the end of it so what's your take oh, no i think i think siddharth very uh, and and through ivca i think they're anyway representing on the tax issue uh that's you know that's that's a very uh, you know could be a game changer sort of if you look at it you know there is some participation happening at the domestic hri levels uh there is also participation from some of the family offices you know i mean of these large corporates but i think it's not enough uh if if you look at with the exception of geo who's probably you know invested with about 20 odd uh, startups in in the last 4 uh, 5 years a lot of the other corporates have done some investments you know whether it's the mahindra group the hero group Uh, a, a lot of other corporates have done investments but it is not enough and and the size of checks they are writing today is you know is is at some level testing uh, you know the markets uh, i i think they also need to build conviction have some faith in in the quality of the entrepreneurs which we are uh, which we have in the ecosystem they need to probably write larger checks uh, and that participation could also you know uh, mellow down to some of the larger hni bases you know who are doing some kinds of investments today but it is not enough and and the government policy will definitely accentuate uh, or accelerate the participation from the domestic wealth uh, and i think we need to reach a stage where you know domestic wealth is uh, investing heavily into this ecosystem uh, and like you know i mean uh, one of one of the key things which i think would could change that is is you know tax swaps or tax benefits so uh, you know we'll we'll start taking some of the questions so i uh, i think we have Uh, Dini, we do. Do we have Dinesh Rai? He he has a question. Can we give the mic to Dinesh, please? Thank you. Um, so I had a question for Siddharth. Dinesh, you'll have to be a little louder. Uh, okay. Can you can you hear me now? Is it yeah, better? please go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I have a question for Siddharth. I just wanted to check with him uh, that given. the suddenness of how tiktok uh, was banned and and there was a vacuum left by apps like mitro how hard was it to come by with the risk analysis and and how did they go about that because i don't think there was enough data on indian driven content driven apps where there was projections on revenue as well as cash flow so just wondering how did they come up with those risk assessments so quickly so as to go about the investments rounds 
Happy to. So see what happens, as I said previously as well, a large amount of the work in terms of creating the foundation required for apps like this to succeed has already been done. There are already, there are already numbers, there are already numbers that these apps have thrown out as to how the Indian market reacts, what the, what the market potential, what the, what is the market potential of the average Indian user. I think the total marketing dollars that one can, one can obtain from an Indian user is roughly about $11 per user. Whereas for the, for the US, for example, it's about 112 so the delta that exists, that there is a delta that exists over there, of course. But the thing about India is India has always been the long tail market. And as these kind of apps, especially are the long tail of the long tail. So while Indians are generous when it comes to their attention, they may not be as generous when it comes to their money. So the alternate monetization strategies that the companies and the entrepreneurs can actually develop and can articulate uh, actually becomes a very important factor over that. So that becomes number one. Number two, when it comes to this, what, is the, what are the technical jobs that these particular entrepreneurs can actually bring to the table as of now? And how, 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 how can they actually differentiate themselves from some, of the other, from some of the other players in the market as well as the larger team? Number three, when it actually comes to this, number three, when it actually comes to this particular part as well, what is the tech backbone that these companies have actually developed as of now? Because see, the most core product that we hear, the core product, if you actually ask me here, are the users and everyone who comes on board. The technology platform actually becomes the greatest enabler of this as well. And all this is primarily driven by the vision that comes in with the entrepreneur. So the risk assessment, as you said, even as Aswad Dhamodaran, one of the most foremost experts on valuation, as he said, for companies who are just starting off as of now, whatever business plan they may possibly give you, discount that by 50, 60%, run your own assessment, and then pray to work with them, work with them hard and pray to God that you can actually build the entire company up after that. This actually becomes a lot. And this is some of the, this is a hallmark of early stage investing anywhere, anywhere in the entire world. So what, what matters of yours is actually going to be the entrepreneur and the ability to sort of marshal, ability to navigate all these particular channels and the ability to articulate their vision and actually build towards that as well. Along with this actually forms the integrity, integrity of the entrepreneur. That is, that is foremost because all the claims made on a deck, all the claims, all the claims made on social media or interviews anywhere else, unless they're actually be backed up accurately by the data that's actually coming on board. And once you start digging in, digging into that, it actually stands up to the test of time. That actually shows that this is a person that you can back. This is a person that you can trust. And this is a person that you mind who can actually build an entire company in this in this entire greenfield experience that India India is currently going through. As well. So, Neil, will you have will you want to take uh, that question as well? No, I, I think I think Siddharth has covered uh, the points uh, hmm. well. So, hmm. I mean, I don't have anything to add. To that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, we'll take the next question. I, I think the next question is from Swagat. If we can have Swagat, please. Yes, Swagat, can you hear us? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so my question was regarding uh, Chinese competition, that is TikTok. And uh, we saw that in 2017, TikTok was banned. So, and I believe the ban even now is interim and uh, they're contesting this ban. So there's a good chance that TikTok might be back in the Indian and so might the other apps. So uh, my question to all founders is this, that will your social media apps be resilient enough to sustain such a future scenario where TikTok might be back again? Okay. I think partly we have uh, covered, but again, I mean, just from a full case, if you want to add anything to what we have already discussed. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, the uh, I mean, as we uh, we had already touched upon this, the ban was never uh, never something that we were uh, you know planning to or building our company around. Uh, the ban just came as an accelerant and as a, as a, you know as, a, as I think as a complete surprise to all of us and oh. and accelerated our 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 growth and strategy of execution. Uh, but but uh, even if the ban is uh, uh, you know uh, lifted and even if they come back. Uh, uh, I think it, it won't really matter because uh, we, uh, I mean, the, the goal of building uh, Chingari uh, and uh, the goal of building this product was not uh, because uh, we wanted that TikTok should be banned and then we'll grow our, uh, you know, our business uh, and, and product uh, and build, build, build the company. Uh, we were, I mean, doing, uh, doing and, you know, uh, building before, uh, before the ban as well and doing well before the ban. Um, so, yeah, I don't really think uh, it will matter if, if they come back. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll still execute and execute uh, 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 you know, at whatever plans we had. Sure, I think I'll cover it on a broad point, right? So uh, talking about uh, Indian market and being able to go to international, I think 
most of it is about focus right so i believe entrepreneurs have seen amazing opportunity rising in india uh, we have seen all sorts of media platform be it television radio or you talk about even web publishing all of them got localized in india have created humongous amount of value and uh, you know great uh, amount of businesses are coming out of it i believe that india is going through an inflection point where uh, we are seeing almost 15% of the world's population coming online in next few years uh, if we don't focus there right uh, then the dream of making an international product is a long shot dream right so you focus on something which is growing very fast where nobody has solved the problem and essentially create value uh, for the users who are really looking uh, for the products made for them uh, so i think that is where uh, you know all of us are focusing upon uh, and definitely in future uh, most of the platforms who succeed are going to go after the international markets as well shivak yeah i mean um... uh if we focus on indian market to begin with uh, i think the most of the corporate i mean international companies they, they haven't seen you know the deep roots of our societies so they have been more you know prevalent in, in metro cities and tm cities for example even the need for a creation tool i mean what tools they want actually differs a lot uh for the metro users as well as you know tier 2 and tier 3 <coughs> so i think uh, that understanding of the market will be a differentiating point for us backed by a solid technology team this this might take on it okay perfect good job so we'll take the next question uh, we just have a couple of minutes to go before we wrap uh, so can we have manju nath uh, uh, asking the question manju if you hey, can hi uh, yeah hi so i have two questions um one is uh, as siddharth correctly like mentioned technology backbone uh, is crucial um so what is the tech stack being um by uh, these applications the second question that i have is uh, what is the plan for uh, uh, short term and long term monetization i think the monetization question already uh, we have touched upon it but if you want to add the uh, image full tip shivang but the tech not tech part that the question was how would you want to take that up uh sure so i will I, I, i can talk about uh what we are doing at singari um so i mean obviously uh so uh, you know this uh this application is a deep tech play uh you you have uh, you have to build a lot of machine learning you know a lot of interesting algorithms in the back end to uh, to uh, personalize and then predict the best videos for for the users that are consuming and that are, that are you know coming on the platform you have to build amazing creation tools in terms of filters the ar filters uh, i mean you, so you have to understand that uh, chingari uh, you know all, all of these platforms uh, you know they have to get uh, they have to give uh, creation abilities to the to the platform users in a way that they get hooked to it uh, uh, so so that, that that's really important and uh, the third thing is obviously uh, you know a robust infrastructure robust backend in terms of uh, so so it could be like a, i mean so i think uh, Uh, two of us are on AWS and uh, you know uh, infra, and uh, uh, I mean uh, so it it has to be Docker, Kubernetes, uh, you know serverless uh, uh, serverless architecture and all uh, and all all those you know all those uh, stuff, uh, and, uh, and I think um, yeah a mix of all these uh, will, will 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 have to be done to 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 build the next uh, the ne- you know the next big social network out of out of here. and i i already touched upon monetization but i will i will really uh, you know really add to uh, add to this. so so right now all of us are, are are you know really really early in terms of uh, ad uh, monetization so uh, social networks uh, have to hit something called as network effects uh, and only then uh, you, you know as founders or you know or as as the founding team we we would be <clears throat> going after ad dollars but right now uh, what we have thought about is creating a uh, product uh, you know uh, within the product experiences uh, which which are not dis- disruptive for the users so so something like brand challenges brand, brand hashtag challenges or filters for the brands is what we have been working on and uh, so so these these uh, features will not really uh, disrupt the user experience they will enjoy it but their brands will also be able to position their their you know offerings within the product So this is what uh, we have been doing in terms of monetization. Shivang, would you want to answer that question? I think uh, just a couple of points. So even uh, we talk about, I mean, these questions are related technology as well as a revenue model. 
Uh, so, I mean, the thing is, uh, we'll be building a lot more focused product where you, you have, you know, uh, not, we talk about advertisement, it should not be infringing to the user. I mean, the static advertisement. So if, if anyway, we have to display some promoted content or advertisement, it should be very aligned to the user's need. For that, we need to have personalization, that understanding of the user. And that covers the technology part as well, because um, the more you have the understanding of the user through better AI and technology built on top of, you know, the infrastructure that you have, uh, the better control you have what you're delivering to the end consumer. Okay. Uh, Polkit, there is a question, uh, you know, specifically for Trends while Pakistan TV. It says that in comparison to other platforms, Trends has advocated community building first. Uh, mm -hmm. What effects has that seen on your platform? Sure. Uh, so as a platform, we have always stood by building a community of uh, content creators and the network of them with the consumers such that they could establish a differentiated persona of themselves on the platform. Now imagine what is a social network. It is essentially nothing but a virtual world in which you are replicating your offline behavior in some ways. Now, the way people behave with different set of people in different social settings in offline world, the same has to be replicated in an online world. What we believed and what we understood uh, while we were building a community was that a lot of people in India have these lifestyle passion, right? They want to talk about, you know, all these interests related to fashion, beauty, recipes, etc, etc. The problem was they were not able to establish their persona as a storyteller online. For example, you and me talking here, you are a storyteller, I am a storyteller, we are discussing between ourselves. Is there a go-to platform for the mass Indians wherein they could come online and essentially become a storyteller online? And this is where we understood the fundamental need of the people to express differently as compared to the other platforms. And when we did that, we kept on increasing our uh, you know, community base. How we did that was, uh, if you see in India, although we have around 70% of the users who are non-English speaking today on the internet, but there are hardly any content creators who are creating content in the native languages. Uh, the reason for that is the fact that they're underconfident. If 10 people are speaking in English, uh, I bet you none of the people would kind of speak in Hindi or Marathi or Telugu, right? So they feel underconfident in the social settings that are already out there. We gave them a platform wherein they could feel comfortable in expressing their own uh, views in their own languages. Also, we groomed them uh, in order to become better storyteller by helping them to understand how to present themselves online, how to essentially talk about the topics which users are looking to answer or looking to consume online. Uh, so we did a lot of effort to essentially make sure that, you know, the people who are just coming on the internet could essentially become storytellers. They could express about the things that they really believe in or they really enjoy and how they could make content which is relatable uh, to the audience which is trying to listen to them. So I think uh, that has already established us as a differentiated player in the market. And also that has been the reason for us to kind of grow very uh, organically for the last, you know, a uh, few months or year. Uh, just to give an anecdote of that, uh, I think uh, we are one of the only companies which essentially surpassed uh, 25 million monthly active users on our app with less than, uh, you know, $3 million spent ever in the Indian ecosystem, right? So that, that talks about how much community uh, leads to word of mouth and growth for, you know, startups or social startups in long term. All right. All right. Uh, gentlemen, we have uh, run out of time, but there are two very interesting questions, so I'll request you to you know, bear with me and we take those questions. Uh, can we have Jigyanshu uh, to ask his question, please? Uh, Jigyanshu, you'll have to unmute and ask your question. Yeah, please. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Am uh, I audible? Yes, uh, yes sir. My question was like, uh, as we know, there are uh, like a lot of influencers uh, in TikTok. And uh, how far you have seen the ratio that number of uh, influencers uh, uh, shifting to your platforms and uh, what are their reaction to the change in the market? Okay. So maybe you uh, can take anyone? Uh, yeah, I, I can take that. Uh, so, um, I mean, we are seeing a lot of uh, creators. Uh, I mean, I would not call them uh, stars or, uh, you know, superstars of TikTok, but a lot of creators of TikTok moving to the platform. And uh, and I think uh, the experience product product experience uh, feature parity uh, wise uh, is very very similar and uh, and that's uh, there is a reason that why we have kept it similar because uh, we don't want to waste uh, the user's time in relearning you know a new user experience so when a when a TikToker comes to a Chingari app uh, we want him to have the pretty same UX 
uh, pretty very similar onboarding and very similar way of creating the video, uh, creating you know creating his content, merging, merging finding uh, songs and the dialogues and merging them and 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 going about it. So um, um, I mean, uh, uh, and we are seeing a lot of these TikTokers coming to us, uh, creating the content on Chingari, and then also downloading it and sharing on on on, on their WhatsApp status or putting it on their uh, you know WhatsApp stories and Instagram stories. So that is a very very unique behavior that we are observing that's going on in the platform right now. Um, and I think it, it it will just just grow on from there. We are we are planning uh, yeah we are planning some activities around this. So in, uh, community building activities we are planning. And uh, I think it will just go on from, go, go, uh, just go up, uh, up, up and above from here. Okay. And I'll just take, we'll, we'll just take one more question. If Alan is there, Alan has a question. So if Alan, you can ask your question and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, Alan, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a question that would, would we be able to see uh, monetization for the influencers? So one thing you've seen is on YouTube, that YouTube AdSense program where brands could partner up with uh, individual creators and give them money for the brand to promote. Another, and another thing which can be seen from the past is uh, an app called Musical.ly where uh, the users could donate uh, to their favorite influencers or individuals that they liked. So would we be able to see that from uh, Trail Chingari and Mitron? And if not, why? Would it be because you wouldn't want it to be associated with these platforms? I would like to... Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So I think um, uh, the promise that we are giving to the influencers and we're very serious about it is we will give them the growth and their due, uh, which is, uh, you know, a better revenue model. And for that, we are already in talks as we grow uh, with a lot of brands that they can be associated with our influencers. So definitely... Um, we are giving them the growth, which is sustainable, which is long term, then, uh, you know, uh, a short term, uh, you know, uh, gratification. Uh, in that sense, what we, what, what, I mean, we have seen in the, in, at, at the influencer level, a lot of interest because they want to grow on a platform. They, I mean, the, the influencers that, that, they are, that are onboarding on a platform uh, definitely want the same viewership, the same user base that they have seen on the TikTok. So yes, I think a lot of positivity around it. Sure, uh, I'll add to that. Uh, so I think one of the very important aspects to consider in a developing economy like we are living in is that the content creators or the final user who's making an effort uh, to create a lot of differentiated or even you know contact for the consumers should be able to monetize on top of it. And that is when this behavior can become a sustainable behavior for the long term. Uh, now I'm sure like, uh, you know, a lot of apps are also trying it and we are also uh, focusing on it very deeply on how uh, content creators could establish a audience onto the platform, then be able to monetize it with either brand collaborations or commerce onto the platform. And this is where uh, we do believe that in order to make this whole uh, life cycle sustainable, it's important that your, uh, you know, content creators are earning out of it. Uh, so yes, uh, we are focusing on it very deeply and we are very, very particular about making sure that our content creators have a long-term sustainable income from, from a platform like Trill in future. Okay. So, you know, uh, people, we have already uh, uh, you know, surpassed your time, but I will not let go Siddharth and Sumin without uh, telling me that, you know, uh, uh, what is your strategy right now, you know, to catch them young because, you know, it's an emerging space. So, you know, uh, how, are you, how are you looking at in terms of putting your money here? So how you catch them? See, uh, a, space, a space like this, a space like this, I see, is a space like this, we need to create an entirely new greenfield, uh, greenfield kind of company. We need to build it entirely from the ground up and that. So we at 314 actually pride ourselves on the fact that we do have the necessary infrastructure and the people to help these particular companies actually yeah. grow, grow in time. Where we do, where we work very actively with them in terms of market access, in terms of creating, creating the frameworks of governance, of, of, of governance, accounting, finance that they actually require. Every them bolster their particular texts and uh, sort of working them through which are the latest models that are actually emerging as well, how they can actually be applied onto your, onto your entire system and your app and actually getting very hands on involved in this. So like, like I said previously also, the opportunity that we have as, Indian, as Indians, be it as Indian consumers, Indian entrepreneurs, Indian investors, is something that we're only possible to see once in a lifetime. The entire online space is getting extremely crowded and things are extremely volatile as of now. And opportunities like this, the convergence of factors of COVID-19, of, of geo actually happening, hardware costs coming down significantly, 
um, the fact that the fact that the level of education in terms of online online uses and access has grown up tremendously. A large amount of work has been done by people, some of the other larger uh, some of the other larger companies, etc. And all this is now being entirely reset at this point in time. During these particular moments of crises and these particular downturns, these are when the strongest and most resilient companies and founders do actually emerge. And we are doing our part as an as an invest uh, as uh, as an Indian investor investing into these particular companies, working with them. As well as working on the entire ecosystem play, because in order for this to actually rise up, it's not just it's it's not just one subset of the entrepreneurs or investors need to be taken care of. There's a lot, large amount of ecosystem education needs to happen. There's large amount of regulatory changes that need to also happen from that particular part. A lot, uh, large amount of thought advocacy that also needs to play out as well. Because what we're seeing as of now is not the emergence of one vertical. What we're seeing as of now is the emergence of Bharat that's actually going to come onto this particular. That's actually going to come onto intent to a large extent. And make his voice know, heard as he throughout the world, and all of us are going to be participants in this. We're all going to be authors of this particular story, also. So we are doing we are doing our part. We have to collaborate and work with anyone who also is aligned in this particular vision. So, so, Sunil, so now you know there are many uh, startups uh, and uh, 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 aspiring uh, you know uh, entrepreneurs who are looking at this space, and we know that you this space has your interest. So, if they send you their pitch deck, will you have the curiosity to go? uh so sort of we have already backed one company in the space and as a fund we typically don't invest in competing businesses mm -hmm. uh but you know i mean at the larger thesis you know they've different uh chinese bands which uh, chinese apps which have been banned and there could be an outflow of different stories emerging from those bands and we would definitely be interested in looking at some of those but on this specific one i think given that we've already invested in one company we will not probably uh, do a competing investment i mean that's been the philosophy and these eight or that are Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you, everyone. It was uh, really uh, 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 a very insightful talk for even for me to understand from the uh, from the from the you know the the, the entrepreneurs themselves that what they are going uh, doing and of course uh, from Siddharth and Sunil that how the spaces they are looking at and what needs to be changed. So I hope that this was helpful for everyone. And thank you for being here. And I hope to see you guys again very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarab. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Stay safe. Bye bye. Bye bye.